So the Socceroos have gone back to back to back to back to back. The fifth consecutive World Cup. Our boys found a way. Never ever write off the Socceroos. We've been on many journeys, taken our own unique paths. But this story is never done. One squad, one World Cup, one jersey. Our turn to give it 100 once again. That was probably one of the best football. We're good? I'm good. Can we like live guard? Yeah, you can. Okay. We're good. Everyone, welcome to our camp here in Doha. Today I'm joined by Matthew Leckie. How are you, mate? You good? Very good, thank you. We've got a bit of an audience. Um, we're going to have a bit of uh, people saying hello. I know this morning we've got a bit of a session. Uh, how are you feeling? How's everything going? Good, good. Um, obviously, the last couple of days has been recovery, so yeah, just trying to get the body right. We've got um, today and um, we go again. How does it feel to be in not only a World Cup, but a World Cup here in Qatar? What's the vibe like for you personally as, a, as an athlete? Yeah, it's sort of similar to you know the previous World Cups that I was a part of. Mm -hmm. um, we're always in a bubble and obviously it's not the same sort of vibe that you know, a, a fan gets at a World Cup. You know, we're obviously here to do a job, so we are, yeah, mainly in our, in our uh, where we're staying and we don't really get up to much other than football, so it'll be good uh, one day maybe to go to a World Cup as a fan. Um, but yeah, just in camp and uh, focusing on, on, on the games. There's two things on that, what you said I want to touch bases on. I think the first thing I want to ask, being in that sort of bubble environment and being away from family, is that the hardest part, not seeing your kids? I know you've got, was it three kids? Three, yeah. And I've, my, I've got my wife and child at home and being away from them hurts. How, how do you deal with that sort of mental side, being away from the, from the family? It's definitely tough. Yeah, it's tough, but I think, you know, it's obviously, we know what, what it is. Um, you know, that's football, we're always, whether it's, you know, on the weekend at club level, away for a couple of days, yeah. or on a training camp. Um, so yeah, leading up to it, uh, I always knew obviously um, that I was going to be away from the family. I think this time around not so uh, long because uh, normally you know obviously have a, a three four week camp. So I think last World Cup I was I think six weeks uh, away and my, my daughter was I just had one at the time and yeah, yeah. it was tough but. I think it's tough on you know more my wife than, than me. Obviously, uh, you know, Being away. It makes it more exciting to get back and haven't seen them for so long, and just the the smile on their faces when I when how's I the back how's the face time with them? Who who gets the more time out of the three kids? <laughs> it's a bit of a challenge. Yeah, I think you know they obviously want to see me, and but my kids have never been too keen on on FaceTime. They yeah. obviously more present. show their face, but they don't they get shy and they don't speak Aww. too much. But uh, to be honest, I, tr I don't call as much uh, because my oldest now, which is five, she, she gets a bit upset and oh, well. probably best that she doesn't <laughs> see yeah. me because then she, uh, yeah, she sort probably of starts crying at home for a lot of the next hour. It so sort of hits you tough. personally then? Yeah, it's, it's something that she doesn't understand. Yeah. Um, and I just try to limit, you know, her getting upset, so I just try to call uh, my wife sometimes uh, when the, the older two are at, at daycare or mm -hmm. kindergarten and uh, yeah, call her and uh, you know, show my face to my, my youngest, which is turning one next month, which is, she obviously doesn't say anything, but uh, yeah, she smiles and uh, it's just nice. Amazing. Yeah. What about you as a footballer? I think you said earlier, your earliest memory, or sorry, being as a football fan going to the next World Cup or whatever future ones, uh, what's your earliest memory memory of a World Cup? Like, what can you remember? Which one would it be? Uh, yeah, look, uh, as you know, a lot of people that have asked me this question know that um, you know I wasn't really into football as a, at a young age. My my family was very AFL. Um, oh, wow. Fan, they were supporters of the AFL yeah. and I only started playing football um, at school with mates. Uh, my 
the one I remember is probably, um, I think it was uh, 1998. France. Um, yeah, and I remember, I think Brazil was also got close to the end, didn't they? I think they lost in the semi, did they? Yeah, from my memory right now, I haven't had my coffee That's properly just yet. It's the hard. first thing that comes to my head, but um, you know, in terms of soccer, is obviously qualifying against Uruguay. Um, that's sort of when Special I sort moment. of knew what was going on because back then I really didn't know anything about football. Yeah, uh, that was a long time ago. And yeah. I think um, we put out the questions to the fans. Thank you so much to everyone who's answered us on Instagram and Facebook and every other social. Make sure to subscribe and like so we can get our future episodes. So Lex, we got a few questions here. Aaron J on Instagram. And this is something I've asked always when I see you on the sidelines when I'm on the, on the, with my camera. Someone's asked, you're always running at full pace on the field. Do you ever get tired? <laughs> Yeah, for sure. Um, obviously, I'm not always running at full pace, so otherwise uh, I'll probably break down. But um, yeah, I think especially as a winger, uh, that you have moments in the games where it's, you're not really in the action and then when the ball's sort of coming around or you know, a, a midfielder or, or someone looks up, um, you know, that's, I think, one of the most dangerous things in, in football today is you know, speed and um, yeah, we saw that. And buffs. Obviously, it's been a weapon for my, for me in my career, um, and yeah, uh, definitely not always running at full speed. Nicholas has asked on Instagram, "How did it feel getting a first assist in the World Cup against the World Champions?" Yeah, just in general, I think uh, you know the first ten minutes when we went up one one nil. Um, it was an amazing feeling. But in saying that, you know, when I was running over to celebrate with the boys, I knew. You know, it's really early and it's going to be a, a long, a long game. Um, and with their quality, we always knew that they were going to um, come back at us. Mm -hmm. um, and they obviously had a lot of time. Normally, um, in a game like that, you probably hope it stays even for a longer period and then yeah. maybe get a goal later. Um, but yeah, I was, I was obviously. It's one of those things where disappointed, obviously, that, about the result. But it's something I look back on. Um, in the future. Leighton58 on Instagram has asked, is there, a different, uh, is there a different feel to playing in a World Cup compared to the last two? And do you get nervous before the games? I think even this one, you know, the stadium being brand new and everything. Uh, what's, the, uh, what's the vibe like for you as an athlete being on that pitch, just seeing everything compared to maybe the last two that you've been a part of? Of course, there's old team elements and everything, but um, how's it been weather-wise and everything? Yeah, I have to say here in Qatar, obviously we've only played the one game, but it's um, been amazing um, conditions for us, um, not just here in our facility at the training pitch, but uh, also you know the, the state of the, the stadium and the ground was was you know world class. Um, I think uh, you know it's a very special um, atmosphere when you play in a World Cup, not just because you know it's it's the world stage. It's more I think you know both nations are bringing their people over and it's almost like the stadium's full of half-half um, in terms of fans so from both sides you get you know excitement and yep. um, you know the, the crowd really gets into the game regardless of who's going uh, attacking so um, yeah it's it's amazing I as think. an athlete do you soak in an energy like is the fans I know we've got the Tunisia game coming up uh, Opposing fans and our own fans, do you enjoy that energy and that whole aspect of the colours and everything happening around you? Do you take it in? Yeah, for sure. It's amazing. And I think sometimes, um, you know, you get more motivated when um, people are cheering for the other team or, you know, giving you a stick. Uh, and, you know, the qualifier for, to make the World Cup against Peru, you know, I think the um, majority of the stadium was people from um, Peru. and. Even though they were against us, it just was such an amazing atmosphere. It gets you up, and um, fans make football. I think uh, you know it was really, really tough to play in the times where COVID was around and there was no fans, yeah. um, and it really put into perspective how much fans make a difference uh, in a stadium. We've got a few live questions. Thank you to everyone uh, for sending them through. Uh, I've got a few of your teammates coming through here. I don't know if you can see that one or that one. Um, I think Scott Jamison here on Insta has asked, uh, can I ask a question? Why does Lecky always complain about paying fines? <laughs> uh, yeah, look, he's obviously the, the guy that looks after the fines, uh, <laughs> captain. So at any chance, he's trying to find, get players fined. Yeah. Um, 
I don't mind paying the fine, but uh, I just love uh, uh, having an argument. So yeah, you have to. Uh, you have to, you have to Jamo find loves it. it as well. He thrives off it, and uh, it's good fun. Um, I think this is a question that I, I always ask. A city, and even here at Socceroos, I always see you sort of mentoring Tilio. It's probably not mentoring. I know he's probably uh, learning a lot from just watching you um, in the positions. Um, I've got a question here from Jezza1244. What advice have you told the young lads in the squad? Yeah, look, uh, I'm not really the, the player that like, will just grab a player and you know, start you know, rambling on about stuff. Obviously, if they need me, I'm always there. And uh, you just get into scenarios where you know, you're speaking to a younger player, I think. Um, you know, we had a, a bit of a chat leading up to the France game just before. And uh, from my past experiences, um, you know, I was in Brazil at quite a young age, and I just said, you know, just enjoy the moment and do what you do to get, you know, your great players and yeah. don't let the occasion, you know, scare you off uh, from playing your game because there's a reason why you're here. Um, you know, Arnie selected the players that he thinks can make a difference and they've gotten to the position they're in now mm -hmm. um, on, you know, playing their game and just being confident. So that was the message, I think, um, for most of them that were, you know, there against Peru they felt the effects of you know, the atmosphere and the, um, the hostile sort of atmosphere with, with the opposition fans, but uh, I think they were, they're all been around the game long enough to, to, yeah. to feel good about um, you know, going into a game and playing their game. Perfect. Well, thank you to everyone for tuning in. I know Lex has got a training to go to. Um, I hope you had fun. There's, as you can see, there's heaps of questions coming through. We can't get through them. I don't want to get you late for your next uh, session. So, uh, yeah, thank you so much for your time. Thank you to everyone, and we'll see you in the next episode. So the Socceroos have gone back to back to back to back to back. A fifth consecutive World Cup. Our boys found a way. Never, ever right off the Socceroos. We've been on many journeys, taken our own unique paths. But this story is never done. One squad, one World Cup, one jersey. Our turn to give it 100 once again.